Yes, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Father God, that the shout of the King is among us. You guys can be seated and transition here for our recording. It's working. Hallelujah. We just, uh, I just thank you, uh, Father God. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you that you are here, that you guide this this uh, service, you guide this time, that you guide us in all wisdom and all knowledge, that you bring revelation and understanding as we even even gather together to learn more about you, to understand you, to know you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And everybody said, Amen. 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 All right. Welcome to the third week of prayer school. We're so glad to have each and every one of you here. Oh, Holy, school of the Holy Spirit, yeah, okay, see, I got to get used to that again. In case you didn't know, we were doing prayer school before. This is the third week of School of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> uh, um, and um, we're so glad you're here. Uh, for the first couple weeks, we've been talking about... Um, kind of biblical representations of the Holy Spirit. We've talked about uh, the water um, and, and the fire and the oil. And who here remembers what, what the water represents? The Holy Spirit in us. Good. And, and the, the fire represents the Holy Spirit through us. Amen. And the oil represents the Holy Spirit with us. Awesome. You guys, see, the, you know, you shouldn't be afraid of quizzes and things like that. That's awesome. Holy Spirit can work in us. He can work uh, through us, and He can work with us. And, and so uh, with that kind of foundation, it's kind of laying the foundation for, for everything that we're going to talk about because we'll reference all of those things uh, several, several, or well, you know, throughout uh, prayer school. And we were talking about this ahead of time for those of you who are wondering um, how long we're going to do prayer school. Uh, right now I have it on the calendar through uh, through. Um, May of next year and taking the summer off and can just continuing so um, I don't know you can say okay well, well we'll get to that anyway so we're just going to keep doing it because uh, we can talk about Holy Spirit until Jesus comes back amen and maybe we will I don't know uh, we're just going to keep talking about him um, until he tells us to do something different uh, so we're just being obedient to that. But uh, so tonight I want to shift gears just a little bit. Uh, and and we t we've talked about those three things, Holy Spirit with us, uh, through us, uh, and uh, in us. And so, th so this week we're going to actually kind of dive in to look at uh, what a little of that looks like. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, and, and when we, as we read through, through this, it might be familiar because uh, you'll, you'll actually see this. Uh, it's more well known for Luke chapter 4, verse 18. This is when Jesus went to the synagogue. He, un, he, he opened up the scroll, and he read Isaiah 61. And then and when he was done, he said, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And, and, and basically it was his mic drop moment. You know, if he had a microphone at the time, I'd just drop the mic and, and walk off the stage, and everyone was just amazed at it. At first, they were just amazed at what he said, and then they were, they were mad that he said that. Um, you know, many times it, when, in our walk with God, people will be amazed at what you say and mad at what you say at the same time. Um, but uh, so we're going to look at that because we've been talking about the anointing. Last week, we talked about the oil and how that represents the anointing, right? And that, that scripture starts out saying, the Spirit of God is upon me because he isn't, the Lord has anointed me. All right. Um, so as we go through Isaiah 61, we're going to look at Isaiah 61 verses uh, 1 through 7. And uh, it, I actually have 16 different things, 16 different things that's in these scriptures that the Holy Spirit helps us to do when he's with us, that he anoints us to do. All right. Now, these these 16 things, we'll see if we get to, to all of them tonight. We don't have to get through all of them tonight. Um, uh, so we'll if we don't, we'll pick it up next week. But but these are things, you know, like last week we talked about how uh, the Holy Spirit's with us to help us do what he's called us to do. And that's unique to each and every one of us. But there's certain things that we're all called to do, right? That we're all called, if we're Christians, we're called to do these things. And, and, and there's certain things that even within those things, uh, how, how that manifests in our own lives is going to look different. But, um, but we're all called to... Um, to minister to others, right? Now, how that looks individually will be different. And that's kind of what uh, Isaiah 61 is about. Because it, it starts out, and I'm going to have the scriptures up here today so, so you guys can follow along. It starts out, and it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Now, when Jesus is reiterated this, it clearly it's talking about Jesus, right? It's saying, this is prophesying Jesus coming. 
at, at this time when we read in Isaiah 61, but Jesus came with the anointing. You know that Christ me, literally means it's a title, it's not his last name. Christ means anointed one, the anointed one. But we call ourselves Christians, which means that uh, when we call ourselves Christians, that means we are anointed in the same manner as Christ. So what Christ said, I came with this anointing upon me, is the same anointing that is now upon you and I. In fact, this is, this is uh, what, what Jesus meant when he said um, that while he, the Holy Spirit was with him while he was here, but it was what he meant when he said, it's better that I go away and send you the Holy Spirit because now you can do the same works, everyone say same works, that I did in greater works. Now say greater works. So the same things that's listed in Isaiah 61 and greater things, and I think uh, greater is, is because we're not limited as one person in one place. We can be across the globe and operating in the same anointing, right? Um, uh, you know, G Jesus had, had the Holy Spirit without measure. We have a measure, and yet we can still do greater things because we can accomplish more together than we ever could apart. So what's listed here in Isaiah 61 is... is something that we are, are, are all things that we are anointed to do. You with me? All right, so we're going we're gonna to go through these things. Again, I have 16 of them, and we'll see how many we get through here tonight. Um, and, uh, and we'll just kind of go and flow with this, all right? So he's anointed me. He's, he, he's uh, the, oh, let's just start. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. And it goes on to say, to preach good tidings to the poor. To preach good tidings to the poor. Now that that word uh, good tidings actually literally means good news. And what is the good news? The gospel. They didn't have that at this point when this was being prophesied, and yet it's still in the prophecy, which I think is awesome. Um, so, so to good tidings is is the good news to the poor. Uh, actually, means meek or humble. Not just poor, like I don't have money, but the meek or humble. I believe this is really saying, and this is something that's important for us to under, know and understand as we go out into the world. What it's really saying is, he has anointed you to preach the good news to those who are willing to receive it. You know, we can, we can get ourselves all worked up about people who aren't willing to receive it. And, you know, the Bible actually says, when Jesus actually sent the 70 out, he said, don't worry about the people that aren't willing to receive it. Just wipe the dust off your feet, which is, you know, uh, a, a, a phrase that they used back then, which just basically said, you know, don't sweat it and go on to the next place. All right? So he has preached, or he has anointed you and me to go and preach the good news, to spread the good news to those who are willing to receive it. So the first thing that you are anointed to do, that the Holy Spirit is with you to do, is to help you talk about God. Holy Spirit's with you to help you talk about God, right? You know, I know that uh, many people uh, are afraid to talk to others about God. I, I, I know I've been there, um, and you know, we all kind of go through that. But even when Jesus was in his glorified body, he said, don't worry about that stuff. I'll bring you, I'll be with you. The Holy Spirit will be with you and give you the words you need in the time you need. He'll bring to your remembrance the things that you need to know. I will help you talk about God. You don't have to sweat it. I mean, that doesn't mean you don't study. Clearly, you study, and you learn, and you do as much as you can. And it's what I found as I go out. You know, I study. I, I have so many messages I've preached that I can't remember, you know, what I preach and what I have. And sometimes I go through my old messages. and like, oh, that was good. I forgot I preached that. You know, but here's the thing that I found is when I'm standing up here, maybe it's after service and, and people are coming up for prayer and I start praying for somebody, God will bring to my remembrance something I've preached before, something I've read before, something I've done before, something I've heard somebody else preach. He'll bring something to my remembrance and I've learned to trust that and say, well, you're bringing it to my remembrance for a reason, right? And so I'm going to pray that over this person I'm gonna, or, or it's, whether it's prophetically or as a word of encouragement, whatever that looks like, Right? But I'm trusting that he's going to help me to talk about God. Not just talk about God in the general sense, but, but talk about to, to really have it be targeted so that it can hit the mark. With me? All right, so he's anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. That's number one, helps you talk about God. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To heal the brokenhearted. That word brokenhearted there means, literally means to be shattered. To absolutely be shattered. You know, there's a lot of people walking around today who, who are shattered on the inside. Probably all of you have been in that place in your life at some point or another where you just feel like your heart is so shattered that you don't, you don't even know how you could ever pick up all the pieces again. 
But you know how many know that God can pick up all the pieces, right? God can pick up all the pieces. And, and I believe that, that um, what he's saying here is that he's anointed to help you speak p- words of peace, to p- speak words of healing, right? There's, there's, there's just nothing like in being in that broken place and then having God himself come in, the Holy Spirit come in and just touch your heart in a way that takes all those pieces and brings them back together in, in, in where there's, there's no... There's no um, scars there's no there's nothing missing nothing broken it's all together in one place only the holy spirit can do that all right but what this is saying is that he has anointed you to be a conduit through, you remember the holy spirit can work through you to be a conduit which you can actually be the conduit that brings that all right uh, so the second thing is that uh, the holy spirit has anointed you he comes to help you to heal yourself he comes to help heal you, but also to help you heal others. Help you to heal others. And, and uh, you know, that, that's... If you've ever been in a situation where you just know somebody's broken and hurting and you don't know what to say, you don't know what to do, right? That's where the Holy Spirit's there to help you. And I'm telling you, guys, when, when, my, when my dad passed... Uh, which is a little over a year ago, uh, and I got the text that, that he, was, he was gone. Um, I, I just live less than 10 minutes from his house, um, and uh, so, I, of course, I drove immediately over. My little sister, my baby sister, who's not, you know, a baby anymore, she's, uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, she's in her early 30s now. Yes, that's, now I'm dating myself. I can't believe my baby sister is, is in her 30s, but uh, anyway, she's 32 32. Anyways, that's, yeah, she just loved that this is being recorded. Anyways, um, she was, she was home with, and she, she lives in Texas, but she was, she'd been home and she was staying at the house and she was just a, a rock star, um, being there when, while, while dad was on, uh, in, on hospice and at the home, at, at, at home and, and just taking care of what needed to be taken care of and, and just, just doing what needed to be done. And I think part of it was her coping mechanism. If I'm staying busy, if I'm helping, if I'm doing all that, right? And she was great. But I got there, and, you know, the problem with something like that is that now he's gone and you have nothing left to do. And everything that you've been working and busy to try to, try to keep in or, or keep aside now comes flowing out. And so I walked in the house, and the very first thing I did, my dad was, was laying on, on the, the cot there. I didn't go and see him. I sat down next to my baby sister, and I just held her. I just held her as she cried, and we, I cried, and I didn't even go see my dad yet um, for a good, good long time. And it was just, and you know, we talked about that, that later, it's just something healing, just knowing, you know... <laughs> Um, there's others that come in and try to say something, you know, and I'm a pastor. I can, I got a lot I could say, right? But I just, there was something in me that said, just hold her, just hold her and let her get it out. And it was a healing moment for her. And it was a healing thing for me. And, and, and that's the Holy Spirit in you, helping you help somebody who's brokenhearted. You with me? Okay. So number, that's uh, number two. Um, remember, these are things that we are all anointed to do. It will look different for each and every one of us, but you are anointed to do these things. The Holy Spirit helps you to do these things. Uh, so next it says to proclaim liberty to the captives. Proclaim liberty to the captives there. That word proclaim means to speak. The word liberty means freedom. I, I like It actually goes on to say that it's free-flowing like a river. It's freedom that flows like a river. It's not a moment of freedom. It continues to, it's flowing and flowing. You know, Jesus doesn't come to set you free for a moment so you can get back into bondage again, right? Right? The kind of freedom that, that, that God brings is, is a free-flowing freedom that continues to flow and continues to grow. You know, the, the, the Mississippi River, River, when it starts at, at the headwaters, we've been there many times, right? We, it starts, it's, 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 uh, you can walk across it, right? But as that river continues to flow and continues to flow and continues to flow, you go down to Louisiana and you're not walking across the mouth of the Mississippi River, right? You're not doing it. it, it it's, it's a mighty flow. It's, it's like a mile across or something like that. It, it, it's, it continues to grow. That's what, what the, the freedom that Christ brings. Um, it, that's the kind of freedom that he brings. 
And, uh, and I believe that when it's, you know, I was talking about captives here, it's really talking about, um, well, put it this way. It, we're talking about deliverance, and we're talking about the authority to bring deliverance. Okay, uh, to proclaim liberty to those who are captive that are bound up. How do we to speak things that, that bring that free flowing freedom? We're talking about speaking things that uh, that bring he- healing and deliverance to people. So the third thing the Holy Spirit will help you to do is to walk in deliverance and to help others walk in deliverance. All right, because it's that's the flow right there. He's there to help you not just get free, but stay free. He's there to help you help others because we'll all need help from people. Uh, you know, as the, as the river flows, there's tributaries and things that come in and add to it, right? You will have people that come into your life that will help you um, in, in those difficult times. I've told you many times in church about when we have, we're going through our difficult times here in, in, the, in the building and the um, in all the uh, um, challenges we had with the city and everything like that. I would lean on Sarah on my dad bad days. She would lean on me in, in her bad days, and we would both lean on Pastor Eric all the time. Um, you know that he was just always this. We're gonna take it to the enemy. He, his his things. The devil's a putz. The devil's a putz, and he's not gonna win. Well, yes, that's true, but I don't feel like it today. Well, but you know, it, Pastor Eric was there. That's that's us helping each other walk in freedom, right? Because you're gonna need that. Uh, you're going to need somebody. You can't do it alone. And the Holy Spirit's there to help you in your times. But he's also, see, the Holy Spirit's also in Sarah to help me. You with me? And, and, and he's in Butch to help me. And, and, and he's in Kim to help me. All right? That, 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 and that, it, it's a reciprocal sort of thing. So the, so the third thing is the um, Holy Spirit helps us walk in deliverance. You guys getting something out of this? All right. All right. Uh, fourth thing here. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Okay, now notice this says, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. So we are continuing uh, talking about speaking and proclaiming things, okay? By the way, part of deliverance is speaking words of deliverance, casting things out, actually actively saying it and doing it um, in, in the act of deliverance and walking in is continuing to say things that, that are in line with your freedom and not speaking words that are in line with your bondage. All right, so we're continuing this idea of speaking things like that, and it says opening of the prison uh, to those who are bound. That word "open" there actually literally translates to opening of the eyes. And in in uh, Luke uh, four, the translation actually says uh, to to restore sight to those who are blind. All right, so that's how that translates there. But it's not just talking about natural blindness. It's, it's talking, the emphasis is more on spiritual blindness. The things, I mean, by the way, God can heal um, natural blindness. But this, the, the emphasis here is, is uh, speaking truth that sets people free. You with me? Speaking truth that, hel- that lets people see. You know, I'm reminded of the story of Elisha. Um, I think I preached on this a, week, a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah, it was during uh, This is How I Fight My Battles, uh, for those of you who are here for that. That uh, Elisha, when, when uh, the, the enemy came against them and tried to trap them, and uh, their, their city they're at is completely surrounded, they wanted to kill the prophet because the prophet kept uh, being two steps, three steps ahead of them, and his servant is, oh, woe is us. And Elisha says, um, Lord, open his eyes that he may see that those that are for us are greater than those who are against us right? Um, Open his eyes so that he can see the things of God, so he can see things God's way, because when you can, if you could see what I see, if you could see through God's eyes, if you could see this, you, you wouldn't be distressed, you would be cheering, right? And we, we need, we walk around, whether it's through hurts, through what we've been taught in the past, whatever it might be, we walk around with spiritual blinders on in so many areas of our life. We can have clear sight in one area and be completely blinded in another. And it's a continual process, a sanctification process almost, um, that, that we walk through. And um, the truth is the thing that sets us free. The truth is the thing that opens up our eyes, and only the Holy Spirit can do that. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. Um, so the, the fourth thing that, the, that uh, the, you are anointed to do, that the Holy Spirit's with you to do, is to help you understand the truth and to help you help others understand the truth. 
Now understand, when I say this, you can't force, you're not the one opening their eyes. Okay? It's the Holy Spirit that's opening their eyes. You can speak, you can be the mouthpiece, but the true eye, the spiritual eye opening that happens is, is not what happens between the ears, it's what happens in the heart. Okay? And it has to get through to the heart, and only the, the, the Bible actually says that God speaks to the heart. And, and people can put up walls and barriers and stuff like that. It's your job to, to, to speak it, to listen to the Holy Spirit and release it. But as you do in the proper time, the proper season, either you're chip, sometimes you're chipping away at the wall, and other times you're busting that thing down and truth comes in. Okay? But it's the Holy Spirit has anointed you to speak the truth. And he will show you the truth. See how all these things kind of interconnect. Remember how we were saying that uh, uh, he helps you talk about God. Well, one of the ways he helps you talk about God is by revealing the truth to you so you can speak the truth to others. You with me? Okay. So that's four right there. On to our next slide here. Okay. Uh, so verse two. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I like this one. All right. The acceptable year is the desired, desirable, or it actually says self-will. Self-will, that word um, translates to desirable or self-will. But whose will is it that we're talking about in the scripture? God's will, the Lord's, right? All right. So when you proclaim, when you speak something that's God's will, okay, what is that? That's prophecy. It's the prophetic. And what's more, it says that um, the year can be a season. The prophetic comes for a season. The prophetic comes to, to, for, for the season that you're in. It, it very, it's very seasonal sort of thing, and I don't mean seasonal in the natural sense. I mean, I'm walking through this right now, and I need help in this season I'm in. Um, in, in, in many times, God will, in the season you're in, he'll speak help to that season, but he'll also speak to the next season to prepare the way for the next season, the next thing I have for you. If you've heard prophetic words, um, if you receive prophetic words, that's many times how it works. It's in these different uh, seasons. This is a season you're in now. I want you to prepare. I want you to, stu I want to, you to, to study. I want you to listen to me or things like that because I got something great for you in the next season. How many of you have heard prophetic words like that? Okay. All right. So this is what this is saying. That, that you are anointed to prophesy. You're anointed to prophesy. Or we could put it this way. Number five is the Holy Spirit helps you know and speak God's will. He helps you to know and speak God's will. You're anointed for that. You know, I, I, I've said this many times. I can't remember the last time I said it. It might have even been the first week here. But uh, if you are a born-again uh, believer, you can prophesy. You're anointed to prophesy. I've said that many, many times. Now, many people don't believe it. They're not comfortable with it. They don't want to do it. Some people do it. They don't realize they're doing it. They, they think make it more complicated than it needs to be. But, but if you have the Holy Spirit in you, it actually, the, the revelation says that uh, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So if you're testifying to Jesus, if you're telling the story of Jesus, it's prophetic. Okay? And so you are anointed to know and speak God's will. He doesn't, see, you know, the Bible talks about how there's hidden mysteries, but for us, they're not hidden. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. And he reveals those things. He reveals his will, his plan, his purpose. We don't get it all at once. We, we, he reveals in, we know in part, he reveals in part, and all that, bit by bit, because if we could see the whole journey, we'd turn around and go the other way. But he illuminates the part that we can handle in this time and this season, you know, and then as we step into that part, all the stuff hits us that we didn't know was coming. All these other anointings come into play to help us walk through it. Okay. All right. So you're, you are anointed to prophesy. He helps you to know and speak God's will. Number five. And it continues. And the day of vengeance of our God. Again, we're, this is a continuation because it says and, comma, and, right? So this is a continuation of what we are proclaiming prophetically. All right. So the day of vengeance of our God We'll just, I'm going to really simplify this and tell you what it means. It means to prophesy godly warnings. Prophesy guide, godly warnings. The Holy Spirit will help you avoid danger and help you help others avoid danger. They have ears to hear. 
Okay? So there's an element of prophecy that comes, and it's not to say, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm angry and I'm going to strike you down. That's not the heart of God. The heart of God, when he reveals something, when he prophesies something, is to steer you clear of danger, to steer you towards repentance, to steer you towards breakthrough. All right? That doesn't mean that people always receive of that, but it, but it does, uh, but, but God will come, the prophetic will come to, to do those sort of things. You know who else comes to do those sort of things? Eric and Desiree. <laughs> you don't even know how well you, I just worked that in. I just... So you want to come prophesy right now is the time. Welcome, guys. All right, so now the, now the baby's going to steal everyone's attention. That's all, that's all good. Okay, so that was number, what number where were we on? Number six, helps you avoid danger. That's it, helps you avoid danger and helps others avoid, help you help others avoid danger. You see in this? All right, so we're going to move on to uh, verse three. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep, missed that one. Okay, yep, there it is. And I'm just hitting all the wrong ones. Okay, here we go. So comfort all who mourn. Yep. <laughs> to comfort all who mourn. Um, the Holy Spirit helps us. He's with us. Uh, to helps us to see and comfort people where we couldn't see their hurt. We couldn't see that they were struggling. Um, and we maybe wouldn't want to help them in the first place. Maybe it's because they've hurt us. Maybe it's because, you know, of, of how they've acted, how, what they've done, you know, because we don't relate to them or whatever. Um, but the Holy Spirit comes, and uh, there's a compassion that, that, that can rise up on the inside of you that will help you see people, right, that, um, it, that you would otherwise just maybe get upset with or, or not think twice about. And to see, you know, see beyond maybe the wall they're putting up, the mask they're putting on, see beyond that, because you know, how many understand that, that God sees through those things? And see the hurt that's inside, all right? You know, the old saying, hurt people, hurt people, right? Um, so the Holy Spirit is, is with you. He's in you to help see past those things um, so, th so that you can, you can begin to see people with eyes of compassion no matter what they've done to you, no matter what they've done to the people around you. That doesn't mean you put yourself in situations that you shouldn't and you, you still do wise things. But if you can see, even if somebody has said terrible, awful things and you can still see them with compassion, that's the Holy Spirit, he, he is there. He, that's literally an anointing. That something He's with you to help you do that because we couldn't do that on our own. We couldn't do that without the Holy Spirit. Okay? So that's number seven. The Holy Spirit helps. And, and by the way, he helps us do this uh, for ourselves as well. Sometimes, sometimes we're the ones hardest on ourselves. You know, and, and we need to, to be, let the Holy Spirit say, no, it's okay. Um, you know, I... I I, 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 this is how I see you. I know you're hurt. I know, I know you're struggling right now, but I see great things in you, right? And the Holy Spirit can come in, in you and do that as well. But you can be the conduit that, that does that. So number seven. No, I just got number seven. Did I skip one here? All right, let's do a review. So this is school. All right. What the... Yeah, all right. Now you got an excuse. That's all right. Oh, okay. I got to get warmed up. Make fun of Eric. Make fun of Eric. Get back in the zone. Okay. Focus. Okay. Holy Spirit, focus. <laughs> okay. Number number one was helps you talk about God. Number two helps you heal and helps you heal others. Okay. Number three was helps you walk in deliverance. Okay. Number four is helps you understand the truth and helps. Other, helps you help others understand the truth. Yep. Uh, number five was help you know and speak God's will, which is prophecy. Mm -hmm. And number six was an extension. Of number That's probably where we got confused. Number six is an extension. And number five uh, helps you avoid danger Helps you and helps you help others avoid danger. So I split those into two. You want to put those into one, whatever. But I, uh, my counting is still intact. Praise the Lord. Okay. And number seven was helps you see others the way God sees them. Okay. How are we doing for time here? Um, we will, we got, 
We keep going? All right, we'll keep going. Praise the Lord. Number eight. Number eight. To counsel those who mourn in Zion. To counsel those who mourn in Zion. Uh, Zion, when we see that in the Old Testament, uh, really represents a people of covenant. And how many of you understand that you are a people of covenant? If, if the Holy Spirit is living in you, there's a new covenant that is living on in the inside of you, a, a greater covenant, an everlasting covenant, a covenant that isn't, isn't dependent on, on the works of men, but dependent on what Jesus already did. Hallelujah. Okay, so it's talking about people of covenant, and it's saying that um, to counsel those who mourn in Zion. To, that word counsel means to set, to ordain, to establish a foundation, to plant or fix in place. Okay, so I, so I believe what it's saying here is, is that it helps us strengthen our brothers and sisters in Christ and ourselves in their times of greatest need. That there is something on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, an anointing that can rise up that will, will allow you to help strengthen. That's the pillar, right? That's what that word counsel means, to establish that foundation, to plant, to fix in place, um, to, to, to establish you to, to, uh, in your times of greatest need. I just mentioned this, and now he's here. But, but again, this is the same sort of thing when we're talking about the building and, and, our, and our ups and downs with the, with the city and everything like that, that, that uh, Pastor Eric... See, now I'm saying nice things. That's not even right. Um, it must be the Holy Spirit. Pastor Eric would be, would be one that would come in, to, in times when we're down and to strengthen us, to establish us, to counsel those who mourn because we have a covenant relationship, because we're in this thing together. Because, uh, because you know, if one can put a thousand to flight, then two can put ten thousand to flight. And we know this and we understand this, okay? So you are anointed, the Holy Spirit's with you to encourage you and to help you be an encouragement to others. See, these, you know, we're, we're drawing these things out, but in the end, they're really simple concepts. You, but the Holy Spirit's with you to help you encourage. All right? So be encouraging. All right, so we counsel those who mourn in Zion. And now it continues. It says, to give them beauty for ashes. Now notice how this is worded here. To give them be beauty for ashes. Who is them? It's, we're still talking about the same people. Right? Same people here. So the same covenant people. Okay? Um, the, to uh, give them beauty for ashes. Uh, so we're still talking about brothers and sisters in Christ. That word beauty, I like this, means to crown or to adorn. Okay? To crown or adorn. And ashes, the figurative meaning of ashes is, is, is literally worthlessness. All right? So here's, here's what, what I love. The Holy Spirit has the power to take what is absolutely worthless in your life and crown it with glory. Isn't that cool? To, ab to take what's worthless in your life and crown it with glory. And sometimes, for people to see that, many times for people to see that, they're going to need the Holy Spirit in somebody else to open their eyes, to proclaim sight to the blind, right? So that they can see that even though you made this mistake and that mistake and all that sort of stuff, God has still used all that. And, he, and, he is, and it's not excusing mistakes, but it's, you know, you've heard me tell the story many times about the karaoke and how God used all my past to prepare me for ministry, even though it had nothing to do with ministry, right? That God can use what seems worthless, and he can take and put a crown on that to, to, uh, glory, to bring glory to him. Another way the Bible says this is old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Yeah. Right? right? That's beauty for ashes. So we can say number nine like this. You are anointed. The Holy Spirit helps you to overcome. It helps you overcome. Okay? All right. Number 10. The oil of joy for mourning. Again, we are still talking about the same group of people. Um, oh, by the way, so we can help one, each, one another overcome and see those things, right? So the oil of joy for mourning, the, the, your joy. Remember, remember when we talked about the oil, how the oil actually is sticky? It's hard to get rid of. It, 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 you, you rub it on and it's hard to get off and the oil is still like oozing out of the walls of this place, right? Um, yeah, you know. <laughs> Eric can testify. Give, give me an amen. There's oil on these walls. Um, so the, 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 that there's an oil uh, of joy that can rub off that uh, e even in the worst, worst of situations, right? Even in the worst of the worst situations, that there's something on the inside of you that the Holy Spirit can bring up that, that can bring a, a joy and a peace that just can rub off on others. It, so number 10 is the Holy Spirit helps you find peace 
and helps you help others find peace. Even in the worst of situations, remember, we're talking about mourning here and ashes and in the, in the worst of situations. See, because this is what, guys, this is what, what separates us from the rest of the world. We all go through these things. But when we go through the worst that life has to throw at us, and we come through it differently than the world does, that's what opens other people's eyes. And they're like, how did you do that? Where, where did you find the strength? And the truth is, is, is we find the strength because of he who lives in us and because the, that same Holy Spirit that lives in me lives in you and we can, can strengthen one another, right? Because when, when, there'll be times, guys, we all know it when, when we, you know, I, I've been there recently where, where I should be d- digging deep in the Holy Spirit and I should be trusting him and listening to him and I'm not doing it. I should be doing it, and I'm not because it's my flesh, because it's my morning. Um, yesterday was my dad's birthday, and uh, it was a tough day for me. So, you know, I, I, I was mourning. And, and you know, you, you need people to come alongside to have the same Holy Spirit to say, you know what, you need to tune back in to, 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 uh, to the thing that can actually bring you joy. Amen? All right. Garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Here's Sarah's favorite one. We couldn't, we couldn't go through this without getting this one, right? Garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That gar- word garment there actually means mantle. And in the Bible, a mantle is an assignment. It's something that, that uh, signifies your assignment. There's the mantle of Eli- Elijah passed on to Elisha. And ultimately, John the Baptist wore the mantle of, of Elijah, which signified him as a prophet. Okay, So it's a, it signals an assignment. An assignment is always something that you're anointed to do. God doesn't give you an assignment without anointing you, which means the Holy Spirit is there to help you. So, so this is what's cool about this. Okay, there's a garment, there's a mantle on every single one of us for praise. Every single one of us has, is anointed to praise and worship. That's, I'm not talking about standing up and, and playing the guitar and leading worship. I wish I could play the t- guitar. I can't. I can hold a tune, but it's not, I, no one's going to call me for auditioning for American Idol, okay? Um, and I've heard some of you sing, and I'm not going to look at anybody. No, I'm just teasing, <laughs> Eric. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, see, they got it in. Okay, but the point is, is, it's not about that, okay? It's about something that comes up on the inside of you. In fact, that word praise there, that word praise is, is, uh, is the, uh, oh, I didn't uh, it's, uh, tell you, uh, I didn't write down the Greek word. I got all the definition. Um, it's, uh, I think it's teliac, but it, it, there's, there's seven words in the, in the Greek for praise, and uh, um, I think it's teliac. Um, and that that word for praise in the in the he- Hebrew in the Hebrew me- means yeah okay Greek Hebrew whatever you know one of those other languages no in the Hebrew teliac the word for praise which is in here means um, a type that type of praise is singing but it's not just a, any sort of singing it is singing that bubbles up from your heart. It's a spontaneous type of singing. singing. Uh, they're songs that are unrehearsed, unprepared. These are Andrew's favorite kind of songs, right? There's, there's, it's a song. It's a sound that rises up straight from God. Um, the scripture references uh, are also in Psalm 22, 3. Uh, these are the kind of praises that God inhabits. Okay, that's where that is. Um, and, and it actually is, so it's literally saying that God lives in your spontaneous praise. Okay? Um, and... It, uh, let's see, what, what is the other one? Um, Psalm 33, 1. This type of praise is fitting for God's people, or it literally means to make them look good. So when Isaiah is talking, okay, and then this is what you're already talking about. So, so basically what, what, what this type of praise is saying is it's something that, that bubbles up from the inside, from, from somewhere deep inside, and that's the Holy Spirit, right? So this is the type of spontaneous praise, and what is it for? It's for the, the uh, Spirit of heaviness. Now, how many understand the spirit of heaviness is not a godly spirit? Okay? Um, and it's, it's, it's just the only, interesting, this is the only thing where it actually literally says a spirit, where it's, it's inferring a negative um, spirit that comes from the enemy. The rest are implied, but this one's directly saying it. Uh, and, and it really, we could say it this way, it's, it's dull, it's dark, it's faint, or depression. Okay? That's how we probably would say it in today's language, a spirit of depression. Okay? So God has mantled us, anointed us. The Holy Spirit's living in us to help us release a sound, a spontaneous sound that bubbles up, 
a sound of praise, a sound of joy uh, uh, that, we, that we can contain, that we release into the atmosphere, okay? Then what that does then, as we release that up, you're anointed to release that. Every single one of us is anointed to do this, okay? To, to just, just lift up a praise in the middle of, of the darkest dark, in the middle of the, the deepest depression, there's something that, that, that's on the side of you that can rise up and can be released no matter what you're going through or no matter what those around you are going through. The Holy Spirit with you has a sound of thanksgiving and praise that's just waiting to bubble up. And you have an assignment to release that. An assignment. This is the one time where he says, I'm, I, you're not just anointed to do this. Okay, I want you to understand the importance of this. You have an assignment to do this. All right? This is important. And, 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 and it's going to come against this specific spirit. I want you to specifically understand you have an assignment against this spirit. Okay? And that assignment causes the enemy to be silenced in the darkness to flee. Hallelujah. So we can put it this way if we want to summarize it. Number 11 is the Holy Spirit helps you Break through. I think that's a good way of describing it. Helps you break through. Helps you help others to break through. Okay? How are we doing for time here? Oh, okay. So that's number 11. We got... Oh, boy. This is like right in the middle. One more. Okay. One more. Okay. <laughs> okay. Actually, we're going to do two more, and that's going to fit perfectly with, then we can do next week. That, that's a good ending point. Okay, so uh, that's these two. So we'll do them quick. That they might be called trees of righteousness. Trees, uh, again, are symbols of pillars of strength. Uh, it's, the, it's literally, when it's talked about these trees, it's the terabith tree, which is an evergreen tree, which doesn't die. It stays green all year long, right? Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's that you might be uh, a, a pillar of strength, of, and righteousness means right standing. A pillar of strength and right standing that does not die, that does not go out of season, that's, that's, that's in continually green and blooming. The Holy Spirit has anointed you. You, he is with you to help you look the part. To help you look the part, no matter what season you are in. And when, the, by the way, when the Holy Spirit helps you look the part, he's not, it's not an, just an external thing, okay? He's also helping you be the part. He doesn't do some, something on the surface only. The Holy Spirit starts on the inside and works his way out. So that's number 12. The Holy Spirit will help you look the part. And then the, the, we'll end on this one. And the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. I'll say it real quickly this way. He helps you stay rooted and grounded in him. And that will bring him glory. He helps you. You are anointed. The Holy Spirit's in you to help you stay rooted and grounded in him. Or we could say it this way. He's not going to lead you astray. Right? He's not going to lead you astray. So when you feel like you're lost, when you feel like you're, you're being tossed to and fro, remember you're rooted and grounded in him. And trust him, and he's not going to lead you astray. And that's literally the Holy Spirit with you to help you do that. Amen? All right. That's a good place to stop for tonight. So, so then next week we got uh, um, the last three, and then, um, and then there's a whole other section that will be fun to, to pray and, and prophesy into. Okay, so your homework for tonight. Your homework for tonight is this. Um, I want you to go back and read Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 4. I'll read Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 4, the stuff that we just went through. And um, with everything that we talked about in mind, and I want you to uh, write down three times, three times that the Holy Spirit has helped you or has helped you help others in one of these areas. I want you to, to, to just identify, because remember, we're not just talking about this. I want you to see that he's already helped you. He's already helped you do these things. He's already done them in you. He's already done, helped work through you to do them. It's already happened. But we don't, we sometimes they're so simple we take it for granted. Because, because, like I said, doing it with my, doing that with my sister, with with just sitting there when, after my dad had passed and putting my arm around her, most people wouldn't think of, you know, the Holy Spirit's helping me in this time, but He is. So I want you to examine that and just find those three three places where He's He's done that. That makes sense. All right, so let's pray quick, and then we'll, we'll just transition. Father God, I just thank you for this night. I thank you, Father God, for your word, that your word does not return void, but it accomplishes everything that you set it forth to do. I thank you, Father God, that we are anointed. Everybody say, I am anointed. 
I thank you that we are anointed, that we have the Holy Spirit in us, and that he is with us, and that he will help us to do every single one of these things. I thank you that, Father God, that, that there is no junior Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father God, there is no more than or less than Holy Spirit, but the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the same Spirit that did signs, wonders, and miracles, the same Spirit that confounded the wise lives in us, and he helps us to do the very same things and even greater things. So, Lord, I pray even as we go and we do our assignment that you continually bring revelation so that we can even begin to see where maybe you've been helping us and we didn't we didn't know it and we didn't see it so that we can now see it truly open our eyes so that we can see it so that we continue to walk in it and do greater and greater things in jesus mighty name and everybody said amen amen one last thing here before we just transition uh, and and turn off the recording uh we, we don't do a formal offering but if anybody wants to do an offering you can always drop it in the drop box at any time and for those watching online uh, you can go to www.highpraisecentralmn.com if you want to sow a seed into what we're doing here uh, we appreciate it otherwise uh, we will see you online folks next week <laughs>